Just give you praise, oh Lord. Yes. We want to welcome all those that are listening um, today, that are tuning in. Um, we just want to encourage you today, you know, to just seek the Lord in spirit and in truth. Whatever it is that you may be going through, you may yes. find challenges in your life. Um, just seek the Lord and He will direct your path. Hallelujah. Today we're just going to come and just worship the Lord and give Him thanks. For we are here today. It is another day. It is a, it is a gift from God. Yes. Every day that we're here is a gift. And we oh. just thank God today that we're able to come out here and um, just worship Him today. Give Him thanks. Because, I mean, things that are happening out there, yes, um, tragedy and, and all that surrounding us. But as long as we stay focused on who He is and who He is in our lives, we'll be able to, um, you know, go through any challenges that we face. Hallelujah. So today we just come to just give Him thanks, worship Him. Let, 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 let us just leave everything aside and just come before His altar and give Him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We give you praise and thanks, oh Lord. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, even as the top of this lesson is kind of slow. We come to worship you and give you thanks, Lord, just because of who you are, Lord, and knowing that we can do all things through you. For everyone that's out there, and we come and worship the Lord this morning and give them thanks. Ready, Tasha? Amen.
If you're home, get a pencil, get a Bible out, and write this stuff down. Amen. Amen. But I was sharing, and I thank God for uh, Saturday. Yesterday, we were doing Women at the Round Table. Amen. And the outpouring of those that were listening and, and watching with us and encouraging us as we continue to do the work here at Love Wings Ministry Studios. Yes. Amen. Number one, we send our love. Amen. Yes, Lord. Now, I want to continue on that. And it's now my title on this is The Inner Witness. Amen. And I shared a little bit yesterday on, on uh, Women at the Round Table. And it consists of this, that we have the Holy Spirit that's within us. Amen. Amen yes. And as we learn to operate in the gift of discerning between the spirits and he will witness to us if the message is from God. Amen. Amen. In other yes. words, what I'm trying to say, you'll be able to distinguish if it's from God or not. Amen. Yes. As we continue to have an intimate relationship with our Lord and Savior. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want to go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 through 19. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 through 19. Amen. You have it, Victoria? Let's, uh, share it. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 through 19. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, mm -hmm. so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance and his holy people. And his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength. Amen. And you read that out of what Bible? NIV. NIV. Amen. I'm going to read it. It says in Ephesians chapter 17 verse 19. I believe this is the King James Version. It says, I keep asking that God of our what? Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of what? Of wisdom and revelation so that you may know better. Amen. And I will pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he was uh, to which he was calling you, that means me and you, my brothers and sisters, to what? To the riches and of his what? Glorious, amen, inheritance in the saints, amen, and that his incomparable great power for us who believe that the power is like the work of a mighty strength. Amen. Yes. It's something about when I start speaking the word of God. It's something about that it changes the atmosphere. It even changes us inside because you know what? The Holy Spirit comes up which is that inner witness. Amen. Amen. That what we're speaking, what comes out of our mouths, amen, is, 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 is doing what God has called us to do. Yes. Is to speak the truth, nothing but the truth. Amen. So help us God. And the Holy Spirit that's within us. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Prophecy, write this down if you want. A, prophecy is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He makes you aware of things. He's like a, uh, how can I say it? He's like an alarm system. When danger comes, he arises. Amen. Amen. To warn us when we have an intimate relationship. I like to walk around. I'm trying to stay still right yeah. <laughs> this morning. Amen. Uh, so remember, A, prophecy is like the gift of the Holy Spirit because it is. It, it, it enlightens us what to do, what not to do. Amen. Yes. When we start thinking in the mindset of God. Amen. Yes. B, we must learn to judge it carefully uh, to be certain that it is from God. Amen. To be yes. certain that it is from God. We must be able to learn and to judge it carefully because we must be somebody's there. Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, certain that it is from God. In other words, you know, amen, because I believe this strongly, my brothers and sisters, that when you have an intimate relationship with God, automatically when you are going to do something or talk about something or 
uh, somebody comes to you with a situation, God will give you what to say. Amen. Yes. Because things come back into remembrance. So remember, a prophecy is a gift of the Holy Spirit. And B, we must learn to judge carefully to, the, to be certain that it is from God. That's why I tell everybody here is before you say something, just stop. Amen. And make sure it's from the Lord. Because the Lord is always going to give you something positive. Amen. Yes, yes. And the Holy Spirit is going to agree with that. And it will leap inside of you and let you know. Amen. Amen. So again, A is prophecy is a gift of the Holy Spirit. And B, we must learn to judge it carefully to be certain that it is from God. Amen. Yes. And you know, usually when God, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you and God speaks to you, it's something that's going to be positive. Yes. Amen? Yes. It's something that's going to enlighten a person. It's something that's going to help someone. Amen? Yes. Because there's always love and compassion and grace and mercy that comes out of that. Amen? Yes. I was sharing yesterday, and I just want to correct because I, I was watching the video. I was talking about that, I saw something in the movie, but I was talking about the grace of God in a movie that I saw that they were in the church and the pastor had given each person a grace card to put into their uh, uh, pockets or pocketbooks and be able to, when someone came to them, Anina, uh, uh, someone would come to them that maybe we were talking about you have something negative that had happened in the past that to remind you to take out that grace card and give it to that person and give them grace, which is forgiveness and mercy, even as God has given us what? Grace and mercy. Amen. So he was identifying uh, uh, with that. Amen. And that's, that's a spiritual card that we should hold. We should call it the grace card. Amen. Amen. To share God's grace because remember, we're saved by grace. Amen. Amen. Now see, we should Walk in faith and also what? In boldness. And let God work out the prophecy in our lives. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Remember, I'm going to give it one more time. A, is prophecy is a gift of the Holy Spirit. B, we must learn to judge it carefully and be certain that it is from God. And C, then we should walk, what? In faith, once we know that it is from God, because our spirit becomes spirit to spirit. And we'll know that the, the word of God is being manifested within us. Amen? Yes. And Okay, so it's faith and boldness, and let God work out that prophecy in our lives. Amen. And what I mean by that, a lot of us, man, we... We know what to do because the Word tells us what to do. Yes, the Word warns us what to do. The Word tells us, and as we have an intimate relationship with God, we, have, we possess the greatest gift, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And He will guide us in every decision that we do when we call upon the Lord. Amen. And when we call upon the Holy Spirit, that's within us. Because then it becomes agreement to agreement. Then it becomes the remembrance of God's word. Yes. Amen. Yes. I wrote a lot of stuff here, so I won't be looking down for those that are watching. Amen. And let's, so D, just write this. D, very simple. I was thinking, do something. Amen. Yes, amen. That's simple. Amen. It's not that complicated. We're to do something about every situation that arises in our lives. Amen. Mm -hmm. But how more so as children of God, as ambassadors of the Most High. Amen. As ambassadors of the Most High, we're to walk in dignity and integrity and in truth. Amen. And that's something that I'm going to start sharing next Sunday. I'm going to do a series on the integrity of the church and the pulpit. Amen. And those that are ministering out of the pulpit that God has called as leaders and as vessels, really servants of the Lord that represent the Most High. Amen. Anyway, let me get, do something. Remember now, it is the purpose of a what? Of a revelation is to gifts so that we can do something about that situation. Amen? Amen. Yes. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Doing something is the purpose, again, of a revelation of giving uh, so that we can do something about it. God gives us a, 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 
a, a circumstance in our lives, or we meet people that bring circumstances into our lives. Amen? And we got to do something about it. What would Jesus do? Remember I was sharing that Saturday. That's something Tyler should be, what would Jesus do? And just stop and call on the Holy Spirit and say, what would Jesus do in this situation? Should I do this? Should I do that? Usually, you know, common sense will tell you. Now, we know that I was messing around a while back. We've seen it since we were little kids on television, cartoons, right? Everybody watches cartoons, right? And I remember back in the day, I remember uh, Popeye or uh, uh, Popeye the Sailor, you know, Popeye the Sailor, mm -hmm. man. And he would think of doing something and, and anger. And, and, and you would see, I remember a cartoon series they had. And Popeye had a little devil here, a little Popeye devil. And then there was Popeye the Sailor on this side. And they were whispering in his ear. And this is, so to, to, to my message today, so illustrate that, that that's how the enemy works. Amen. He'll try to whisper things into your ear, especially when you become in anger, what I was sharing before. When there's anger, he arises where there's a thought of negativity in your heart and in your mind. And as you know what, uh, what we speak is supposed to accomplish what it's set out to do. Amen. So the enemy knows that. So what happens when that little thing starts taking and you're angry enough in a situation that arises, he'll start speaking. The thing is, who are you going to listen to? Amen. But I believe that the stronger relationship you have with the Lord, amen, with our Lord and Savior, and that you have an intimate relationship, you'll be able to very distinguish those voices very clearly, amen, because you will know what to do in that situation. I hope I explained that right. Amen. That you all got it, amen. And that's why I said, do something about it. And again, what is the purpose of a revelation that comes from God's Spirit, amen, the Holy Spirit that's willing to give us that we can do something about any situation, amen? Mm -hmm. amen. You know, I don't, I, don't, I don't hesitate and I've learned to just stop and automatically before I start speaking, amen, because sometimes the spirit of man can come up or the spirit of doubt will come in and we know that God is a God that gives us a strong mind, amen? And he tell and, and, and we have the greatest gift again, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. For example, we are enjoying the time of praise and worship. Amen. And I want you to really hear this, uh, those that are out there, and you know, all of us here, brother. But it says, what well, is an example? I was thinking about you enjoying a time in praise and worship. And in your church, because I spent a lot of time in church most of my life. Amen. I want to talk about church. So uh you're praising, worshiping in the church, and a person walks into the door, amen, and suddenly you know that that person has been influenced by demons, amen? Mm -hmm. You can feel it because, see, there's an alarm system. This is what I'm talking about that we have, which is the gift of God, which is prophecy and discerning of spirit. Those are one of the nine gifts of the spirit that I was sharing before as I was uh, going into the scriptures. But you'll be able to discern. But suppose you're in the church, you're praising and worshiping, and everything's going fine, and all of a sudden someone comes in, amen, that you are uh, influenced by demonic spirits, amen. You'll be able to see it, amen, because God said that we will see signs and wonders, and you will see the sign on that individual, amen. That's part of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's like a warning system, amen. So we can rely on it. We can trust it. We can believe in the Holy Spirit that's within. Now, what do you do? Amen. What do you do in a situation like that, that a person comes in and you can see that they're going to be either destructive or they're going to or in, or, 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 or have these demonic spirits upon them, and God has shown you. Amen. Not me. I'm up here preaching. I'm just using myself or playing the music or the worship team is worshiping or whatever they you know are doing the praise and worship what would you do God has revealed that demon to you for a reason amen he has he has put that person in your path for you to see him that's why I tell everybody it's your responsibility of those individuals that God put into your life Amen. There's a reason why those people are into your life. Amen. I mean that God has put them in your path. Amen. 
Think about this. Amen. And I do a lot of praying. I do a lot of searching and even in my life and, 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 and analyzing God's word in my life and also the Holy Spirit because I want to know him better because I want to be more equipped and ready for action when a situation arises. Amen. Now, what do we do? God has revealed this demon to you what, uh, and, and to you for what reason? You must, uh, you are what? You are participant in the service. Amen? Because you're, you're in the church. While you may not be responsible as the leader, amen, or the pastor, or whoever's working together, the deacons or the elders, amen, of that service, you, you do share, let me say this, you do share in the what? Corporate responsibility Amen. with those other believers. Amen. With those other believers. Today we 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 help me straightforward. Today we like to blame somebody. We don't like to take blame. Amen? Amen. We don't like to take blame. We want to be a part of a corporate a gathering or or or, or, or uh, what can I say? Uh a club or whatever whatever you want to define that as, amen? But we don't want to take the responsibility. So if something happens, they're ready to point the finger yeah. at the leaders, amen? You did this, you did that, amen? It's your responsibility, not mine. But see, in, 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 the, in the Christian realm, in the brothers and sisters of God, amen, not just the Christian realm, but those that have a relationship with God, amen, is our responsibility, because I'm always saying, I'm going to continue to say that. Because, you know what? God put people in your path for a reason. I keep saying that because we take that very lightly. Amen. And we don't want to take responsibility for those individuals. But Christ came and died for the responsibility of all of us. Amen. He took the responsibility for every one of us that we can stand today being here. Amen. And being able to talk about that. But see, this is the thing that, I, that, that, that I'm trying to get to. Amen. That we to we remember that we are participants of, of God's kingdom. Amen. And we are responsible because Jesus said, I, I, you know, I've done everything. Amen. Uh, you know, I've shown you the way. I've sent, I'm going to send you the greatest gift, which is the Holy Spirit that's going to guide you and to help you. I'm sorry to get excited. Amen. <laughs> To guide you and share. Why well, keep preaching on this? Because people try to do one of these. Amen? Well, it's not my responsibility. I'm just a visitor. You know? It's not my responsibility. I'm just sitting in the church. But God put that person in your view for you to see. It, to see, in other words, what you're going to do about it. Are you going to do something or are you just going to sit back? Amen? See, that's the question today that we have a lot in our churches. Oh, Oh, matter of fact, I'm not going to say I hope I didn't step on nobody. So I hope I stepped on your toe that you realize what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. That is, we are, as we have a relationship with God, it's our duty and responsibility to care for one another. Amen. Amen. Didn't Jesus say in his word to love one another, even to love your enemy? Who was sharing that yesterday? To love your enemy, to you know what, to help those and 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 have uh, the good Samaritan spirit. Amen. Not just walking by and not taking responsibility. If you see one person that's down, you take take responsibility because God put them in your path to see what you're gonna do about it. Amen. I hope you know I'm speaking truth here. Amen. But we that we, we, we tend to say, well, that's the leader's responsibility. Amen. But remember that as children of God, we share in the corporate responsibility with those believers, which are our brothers and sisters, in every sense of that word. Amen. We share the responsibility, even as Christ came and shared his responsibility to save all of us. Amen. That none should perish. Amen. That all should be together as one, as he is one with the Father. He even prayed. He said, Father, I pray that they will be as one with me, that they'll be one with you. Amen. Because there's a thing of participation. We become children of the Most High. Amen. Yes. Amen. Number one, you can write this down. Do you jump up and shout, that person is full of demons. Amen. 
know or what you probably uh, or, or, or know would you probably be the one to cast them out. Amen. That's a question that we got to ask each other. I'm writing this stuff because I want to be straight with everybody. Because you know what? It's our responsibility. That's why it kind of uh, I've been through so much and we've been through so much here and, and, and God allows things to happen. Right, Natasha? Pastor Natasha? God allowed things to happen to see where we're at. Amen. As we examine ourselves and also to see where our brothers and sisters are at. Amen. If they're being as one as, as Jesus said, I want them to be as one. But how can we do that? Well, we've got to become as one, participating in our local churches, in our group of people that God has put us together. Whether you're at home or a small group or a big church or a small church, you have a responsibility to each other. Amen. Yes. As God, as Jesus had a responsibility for all of us, we're to have that responsibility for each other. Yes. We're accountable. Yes. Again, what would you do? Do you do something or you're just going to sit back? Amen. You see a need. You're going to, oh, well, let, let, let me, let, yeah, let's go to the pastor. I see a need for that sister, but let's go to the pastor. Let the pastor take care of it. <laughs> Amen. We hear that all the time. Let the church take care of it. Sad. I'm, I'm in, I'm in. Wow. I'm speaking truth here because, see, we want to know exactly what our participation as children of God. Amen. And as the local church and as the body of Christ. But we take that for granted. How do you think Jesus feels and our Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit also, that's looking, that's in us. And also the, uh, the Father and the Son is looking down from heaven, seeing what we're doing with our lives and our Amen. participation yes. of what we do. Amen. Remember that we are a corporate responsibility with all believers. Amen. Yes. To do things, what would Jesus do? Amen. Do something. Jesus always did something when something occurred. He didn't wait for nobody. He did what he had to do. Amen. But he walked with the disciples and showed them, this is what you do. Do as I do. Amen. That's simple. There's no big uh, uh, prophecy on it, but simple. Do what I do and do it unto others. Amen. Amen. Number three, you can bind those demons and limit their ability to manifest during that meeting. Amen. Because if I see someone, and I'm in church, and I see that they're going to be destructive, and everything, God put them in my path, I'm to uh, spiritually be an usher. Amen. And I said, you know, God has given me power and authority, so he has given you power and authority. Amen. Yeah. We got to... Not only preach or read something, we gotta believe it and we gotta act on it. So if I see someone coming in and God put them in my path, you know, my responsibility is to do what? Is to say, in the name of Jesus, go to that brother or sister and lay hands on them, even by just speaking it in my mind and say, How you doing, my brother? And lay hands. And not let it disrupt the, the, the things that are happening because the enemy will use anybody and anything to come in and to destroy. Amen. I was sharing sometimes that, you know, people don't take responsibility. And I'm straightforward. I'm going to speak truth here today. Uh, I always do. Thank you, Lord. Amen. But I, sometimes I'll be preaching and I couldn't really share the, the, what God has given me because I was so concerned with what's happening in the place because nobody was taking responsibility. Amen. So I had to be there trying to figure out, okay, let me let me give the message that God has given me, but I gotta be, but my mindset was like here and there, watching what's happening in the service. Amen. I'm just using that because I'm talking about church. Amen. And but it defines in every area of our lives. It's just like this brother that was killed, amen. All the people standing around, do something. Amen. Do something. Yes, amen. Amen. Nobody just, everybody complained and took video, but nobody did anything. Ooh, I know I'm going to hit on that one. Wow. Do something. This is what I'm trying to say here. It's up to us to do something. You know, one thing I've learned through my life and through the Word, I can only speak for myself, that I'm a person because I believe in the Word, and we all do, all our brothers and sisters, not just me, that when something comes out, right, do something. Remember that you're in participation with the Holy Spirit and with God. Start doing something about it. Don't wait. God brings a situation. Do something. 
Don't sit back and complain or point fingers and wait for somebody else to do something. That's why God put that situation in you. Amen. Ooh. Remember this, that he that is in us is greater than anything. Amen. And when we identify that, we become so intimate with the Holy Spirit that's within us. Hey! I'm playing something now. <laughs> because you know who you are. Why? Because you and you in, you're in tune with God's heart and God's mind and God's word. Amen. Amen. You can bind those demons and 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 and, and, and the, without the manifesting in that service. Amen. Now, also, uh, we don't have the authority. Some of us say, "Well, we don't have the authority." I'm going to get this straight because I was thinking about this and I was doing a study because I'm always studying. I'm taking a course. On the, so on the internet rather, and I've been taking a biblical course. Uh, but I was thinking about this, and, and I was reading this part. And I had to write it down. It says we don't have authority to cast out demons. Now you're gonna say, what are you saying, Pastor? We don't have authority uh, to cast out demons out of a person who may want them, or from one who has made an opening for them. Listen to what I'm saying to come in without the cooperation of that person. Amen? Without the cooperation, corpor cooperation of that person. Amen. Now you're going to say, what do you mean by that, Pastor? I'm going to read it again. You don't have the authority to cast out demons out of a person who may want them or who may want them, listen to what I'm saying, or from one who has made an opening, amen, for them to come in without the cooperation of that person. Yes. Amen. You know what that means when I'm trying to say by that and what the, I was studying on that is that, you know, like I'm always saying, you can lead a horse to the water, but if you don't want to drink it, right. ain't going to drink it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get frustrated because even our loved ones and family, we want them to be saved. We want them to have a an intimate relationship with God, but they, you know, and you've done everything that you possibly can, amen, and you come to them, you lay hands with them, you pray for them, you talk to them about the Word of God, and I know a lot of us could identify with that because I went through that in the beginning with my family. But you know what? And and, and, and you can tell them about the Lord, you can say whatever you want, but if they don't want to accept it, man, they'll be other way because they're accepting what they feel is about them. So you can't really uh, bind those demonic spirits. they got to make a choice. Amen? Amen? And we get frustrated because we've been praying, we've been telling them the word. they even seen our lives change. But let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, you just stay, and, and, and this is what happened in my life, I can testify, you just stay uh, 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 praying for them, interceding, regardless, you know, you keep interceding in prayer because the Bible says again, again, I was sharing that God hears the prayer of a righteous person. Amen? Yes, amen. And that you might not see it manifest and we get frustrated, so I just want to share that with you. No matter what you do, if they allow those demons in them and they want to live with them and abide with them, because we have people like that. Amen? Yes. That no matter how many times that you tell them about God, so they refuse to, to want to uh, serve the Lord or want to even hear the word of God. Amen, somebody. Yes. Now, uh, you know, so we do have authorities to cast out demons of those, you know, uh, that allow us to work with them, amen, and start believing and open up their hearts and their mind to receive what you're saying, amen. But however, we remember this also, because there's two parts to this, however, we can bind them from operating during a meeting, or a church event, amen, or a gathering, amen, and we can stop them from hindering, right, that persons or persons from receiving the message of God, amen, for them, amen. You see, because they got to hear, we have an ear that we can hear, amen. And we might say, well, I spoke to them, I've been talking to them, but they don't want to receive it, Nina, they don't want to accept it. Believe me. The word does not go in void. Amen? The, the, the thing is that in some people it takes a little longer. But believe me, those words are going in. You, you planted the seed. You just got to keep watering it. Watering it. Watering it. Watering. With the Holy Spirit that's within you and not giving up still on them. 
but you still keep, you know what, praying for them. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praying for them. Interceding for them. Even as the Father knows that we got saved and we all say, but we all make mistakes and do bad things. Hey, even us, the so-called brothers and sisters in Christ, and treat each other the wrong way. Amen, somebody. Amen. <laughs> treat each other and do things that we know that are not right. But we let us, we, we, we see, we don't listen, we don't discern the spirit because we're not allowing to listen to the right spirit. We're listening to what our own spirit wants or what we prefer. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. But again, God sees all things. Remember that. Amen. Yes. And that's how I live my life. I said, I know that when I have a thought, and I know that my conscience, especially if I do something negative, my conscience is going to tear me up. <laughs> it's going to tear me up because I know that I should know better. Amen. It's that simple. You know that you should know better, my brothers and sisters. Amen. But again, we can stop that hindrance of that person and that they will receive the message. Amen. Now, our authority is over demons. Get this what I'm saying. Our authority is over demons and not over humans. Amen? Yes. Our authority is over the demons, not over humans. We must operate in a spiritual authority within the responsibility that God has given us. Amen? We must operate in the spiritual authority within uh, the responsibility that God has given us. Amen. For we know that we don't fight against what? Flesh and, Flesh and blood. We fight against principalities and spiritual Amen. things. Uh, uh, you know, that they, they come. Amen. Right. And we got to define that and know that what, what, our, what our role is as brothers and sisters. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, which this is, I mean, everyone should know this, but we just want to read it because it goes with my message. Because, you know, God has given us power and authority, but over demonic spirit, over things that, uh, uh, that would try to harm us. Because, as, I, again, the Holy Spirit that's within us, amen, uh, protects us, amen. And God's presence always protects us. I'm always saying that God sends his angels all around about us, amen. amen. Heavenly beings, amen, that are around us, that protect us. A lot of times we think to for granted we could be driving our cars and day, and we just could have been, you know, uh, uh, hit by a truck or uh, whatever. Amen. And amen. and God sends His angels or directs us. The Holy Spirit directs us or our mind speaks to our our our, our, our intellect or who uh, as we're driving our mind and directs us somewhere else and protect. How many times you don't even know how many times God has saved us. Amen. Walk into a store and, and you're there and then uh, you leave and then you find, hear it on the radio. They've just been robbed and people were killed or the store exploded. I'm just using that as an example. I pray that that doesn't happen to anyone, but I'm just saying. Uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 19, who has it? I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions mm -hmm. and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Amen. It says what? But listen to what they said. The power of what? The enemy. Nothing will harm you. Amen. Nothing will harm you. This is the enemy. What is the enemy he's talking about? It's the spiritual realm. Amen. The spiritual realm. That's what he's talking about. Amen. Also, Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 19, it says, I tell you the truth. The son can't do what? Nothing by himself. He can only, right? Only what he sees his father's doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. Amen. Who has it? Read it. Amen. Make sure that what I'm reading here is in your Bible. Amen. John chapter 5, verse 19. Someone that has not read. Amen. John chapter 5, verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto mm -hmm. them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. the Son can do nothing of himself, mm -hmm. but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he, do, he does, then also doeth the Son likewise. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. Remember that Jesus cast out demons everywhere he went. 
However, we know that he didn't cast out every demon he came in contact with. If we had, would he have been crucified? Amen? Amen, yes. Even in the Lord's Supper, what did Judas do? Judas Iscariot. He had a demon in him. He's doing that, in, in, in New York terms, ratted out Jesus. <laughs> Dirty rat. <laughs> he, had, he was demon possessed. Amen. To do that. Amen. And, 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 and so, you know, uh, but God always allowed things to happen because I'm always saying in every situation, God allowed things to happen for a reason. You might not get the revelation while it's being done, but you definitely will get the revelation down the road. Amen. Because a lot of times things have happened in my life, amen, that I said, why is this happening to me? Why is my body getting cancer? Why is my liver shot? Amen. I don't even drink or smoke. How could this happen to me? How could this? I can only speak the truth out of my life. It's how could this be at me? I don't drink or smoke. I've been praying for people for years, amen, for healing. And now I'm the one that hepatitis. All this stuff came on my body. Where did that come from? Amen, somebody. And I said, I don't know what's going on, Lord. But I'm still going to believe and trust you. I'm going to call on the Holy Ghost that's within me because I believe your word. And I know that when I call on the Holy Ghost that's within me to say, you know, keep working it. Keep working in me. Keep working from the inside. I'm going to continue to set my mind on heavenly things. Amen. I'm going to continue to walk in the spirit, not in this flesh, allowing my flesh to dictate my spirit. Amen. Hey. I said, I'm going to walk in the truth, knowing that God said that in his word that I'm his child, that I belong to him, and that when I ask something and he allows things to happen, it's for a reason. So I said, Lord, I don't know why am I going through this. I don't know why you're allowing this situation to overtake me right now. My physical being, even as I read the word in Job, amen, and what he went through, but he still said, you know what, I'm going to honor you. I'm still going to praise you. Even in the midst of this situation, even in the midst of feeling uh, uh, abandoned, even in this time that I feel all alone and I'm going to this Father, Lord, I still believe in you. I'm still going to believe and activate the Holy Spirit that's within me to say that I can do these things through you that strengthen me. And even if you call me, Father, I know that where I'm going. Amen. Amen. And that's having an intimate relationship and also letting the Holy Spirit that's within us arise and let these thoughts and these enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Amen. So remember that Jesus cast out all he did, but still, he was a great example. We don't understand. How did Jesus cast out all these devils, heal so many people, and he, and he even knew that what Judas was going to do? And he allowed it to happen. He could have cast around and called a legion of, of, of angels. Even when Satan took him and said, I'll give you all these things and raised them up. And, and he was out 40 days trying to entice his mind and try to destroy him. Yet he said that he lives by the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And we have a powerful God. We have a Lord that loves us. Amen. We have a God that is still in control. And all the stuff we're going through today, my brothers and sisters, that's why I said it's time for us to arise and shine, every brother and sister, and let us walk in unity. And it's our responsibility as the corporate body of Christ to walk in unity and love and peace and in power. Is anyone on there? Uh, love and peace and in power. Amen. Letting us know that uh, we can do all these things through Christ that strengthens us. Amen. And that he's given us the greatest gifts, my brothers and sisters. The thing is that sometimes we just got to stop and let the inner witness that is the, the, the Holy Spirit that's within us to arise. Amen. And Amen. know that you're not in this by yourself. I want to say that sincerely. Know that God is with you no matter what is going on in your life. God is with you. Amen. He never said, he said in his word, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. 
He says that he loves us, that he's in heaven right now, sitting at the right hand of the Father. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is interceding for me and you right now, even as we're going through this time. So when again, when we go back to our local churches or when we go gather now that everybody's coming together and we even hear opening up our doors for those that want to participate and be a part of what we're doing, learning together, amen, learning and sharing uh, uh, God's wisdom in our lives and be able to share it with others and uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to dictate our corporate anointing here to share the gospel, to share the life that God, is, that Jesus sacrificed himself for me and you. That's what it comes down to. And remember that God loves the sinner. That's why he came. Jesus came for the sinner. Amen. And we got to remember Amen. that, that we're to apply that every day of our lives and not judge anybody. Let God do the judging. We just do the uh, 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 binding and, and and loosen in the name of Jesus. Amen. And not giving up on each other, but continue to uh, pray for each other. Continue to uh, allow the Holy Spirit to guide us how to handle every situation with our family members and don't give up on them or our friends or our neighbors that we've been praying for regardless of what's happening. You know what? We keep applying water into that sea. Eventually, God will deal with them. Amen. As he dealt with each one of us. Amen. Amen. So I hope that this message has blessed you today. Yeah. I pray that everything that we do here at Love Wings Ministry will continue to bless you and to thank you for listening today and watching us as we continue to move forward. Amen. Again, you want to get in contact with us is Love Wings Ministry at gmail.com lovewingsministry at gmail.com and uh, I'm here, amen and my family and the lovewings family, we all family, let me just say one thing, Pastor Benny and the family here, we just love you guys and we don't, you know we just go as God leads the spirit and, and we continue to uh, empower ourselves with his word and his power here in this place and we invite those that are out there and I want to say thank you for all those that have been watching us. I pray to God everything that we do here has ministered to you. And go ahead. Go ahead. We have Tanisha, Orlando, so my uncle, Miriam, Ramos, and Anita. Amen. God bless you guys Amen. watching us live. Amen. We love you. Amen. And God is good. Amen. Amen. And out of all the situation, you know, God is a good thing. And I was just thanking God for... Uh, my brother Charles is like a son to me. Amen. Come here, Charles. Amen. See if they all love you. Come here. <laughs> Come here, Charles. And stand up here with me. Amen. And this is what I'm talking about. Relationships and those individuals that God put in your life. Amen. And I could just say that uh, Charles here. Amen. And, you know, he's older than me. No. <laughs> Uh, not only that he's my brother but he's like a son to me and we've been there what nine years amen and he's been faithful and quiet in the back my PA man and cameraman so y'all can see him some of you that don't know him but today is his birthday amen and we just want to acknowledge that the Charles. and uh, thank him for being faithful and that's it you know uh, uh, working together as a team amen we're working together as a team to accomplish those things that God has uh, put into our hearts. And we just thank God for you, Charles, and yeah. what you've been here. And uh, we as a family, and see, uh, even as we were sharing about the brick wall yesterday, God is a beautiful God. He makes us all colors and things, but That's we're right. all brothers and sisters in Christ. And, I'm, and uh, you know, it's a symbolic thing, but to say that we love, we don't just say that. I love my brother. And he loves me, and he would call me daddy, and I'm his spiritual father. Just like I have Papa Keen as my spiritual father. Amen. Out there. God always puts those individuals in your life that's going to be a blessing uh, to, to you. Because God knows how to illustrate. That's why I said it's so important how God put you in my life. And we're, together, and we're still together all nine years, and we're going through even more. So, uh, you, you know, and, and, and that's the thing, that we hear... And while we're here, we're going to love, we're going to encourage one another and build one another up. Amen. 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 And I love you. So let's sing happy birthday, all of those to them. There's a little gift we got for you. Amen. Because we love you. Amen. But let's, all of us, let's stand and let's just sing us here and those that are out there. Amen. Amen. Why don't you start us off, Natasha, uh, singing. Amen. You can sing for right there. You're up there and you just stand. Amen. 
And let us just sing, and then I'm going to pray. Amen? Hallelujah. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus in every day of the year. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. The best one that you ever had. Hey! Amen! I don't want to say your age. You want to say your age? No. I'm 16. Amen. Yeah, backwards. <laughs> God is good. That's what I'm talking about, family. We invite all of you to share with us. And, and we love you. And, we, and me and Charles are standing here. Right, Charles? We care for everyone that's out there. And also we care for each other as a family. And that's what the house of God should be, a family. Loving one another. Caring for one another. Because, you know, what you do to others, man, you know, it comes back to you. And how you treat and that, And that, not only that, that, our Heavenly Father is looking down right now. And I know that each pleas of what me and you, our relationship, and even though we, we both have our relationship with the Lord, but we have an intimate relationship with each other, and we care for each other. And he's like my son, I'm telling you, I took him for his driver's test, amen, <laughs> about eight years ago, I believe, right? eight, eight years ago, I took him for a driver's test, amen, so just like a dad, <laughs> worried and praying that he would pass the driver's test. I'm just using it, but it's the truth. This is what I'm talking about, family, amen. So I love you guys, right? Charles, and let's Amen. extend our hands for those that are out there. Father, I come before you. We thank you for today. We thank you for Charles, Lord. But even as we're celebrating, Lord, even in the midst of all the stuff that's happening right now, Father, we pray for those that are out there, Lord. They might feel lonely, might not have someone, Father, Lord. Father, let them stir their spirit and go to a local church or those individuals that you have, that they have met already, that have talked to them. Uh, about you, Father, Lord, that they would know that, Father, they're not alone, Father. They shouldn't be lonely because no one should be alone, Lord. And to build relationship with brothers and sisters that we can share that relationship and love with all those that are out there. And we just pray for you and give you thanks, Lord, Father, for what we're doing in our lives as yes. we continue to extend our hands and pray for those that are watching us. And we send our blessings and our love and our peace in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Amen.